money, Jordan Bell fur. Stacking penny stocks while I'm flipping these birds. Sipping on Ciroc, trip them up with the words. I done popped the molly and I think it's be my third. Jordan what is going on, DJ Nation? Kenny Kim here bringing you another Fantasy Golf Journal's podcast this week for the Fortnite Championship. We are celebrating a Commander's victory Monday, also a Ravens victory Monday, and also, of course, I'm here as usual. And to the to the to 12 listeners that listen during football season, we salute you. As usual, I'm here with Tyler Tambly. Tyler, what is up, my friend? Hey, what's going on, Kenny? Good to be back. Save the uh, the longest off season in the world jokes because we know it was nothing. We're back. We love the swing season. There's money to be made. We appreciate you guys sticking with us. 12 listeners might be 13 this year, Kenny. We're we're moving up, but yeah, you mentioned it. The Ravens got the W. Your commanders got the W. The Ravens took some injuries on though. So like what else is new for them? We'll talk about that before we get into it. Want to remind everyone this show is brought to you and presented by prizepicks.com. Head on over to prizepicks.com. Use promo code MMN. Get yourself a hundred percent bonus up to a hundred dollars on your first deposit. Daily fantasy made easy picks and plays all different ways. Plenty of props. You can go out there right now. The, the PGA ones aren't up just yet. They'll likely come out tomorrow. I can assure you, hopefully starting next week, if not into the regular season, they've guaranteed it, but there will be specific lines up for the Fantasy Golf Degen Nation so we can get our picks in on this show, talk about them a little bit more, but we've been making pretty good money over there with NFL. If you guys don't know, I'm doing a show right here on the Mayo Media Network, so if you haven't yet, hit that like button, hit that subscribe, get on the channel for the notifications because... I'm going to be on your TV every Wednesday. I'm doing the prize pick show for Thursday night football. And it's got a little main slate prep for it. But again, you want to wait, right? For main slate, there's a lot more that comes out because Pat and myself, Pat Mayo, that is, are doing the show on Friday where we're doing it live in studio at his place, going through everything with a much more up-to-date ownership list and all the injuries and things like that that we can have in our hands. So get ready for that. It's going to be a good one. But Kenny, we're back, baby. It's swing season. Got a lot of stuff going on here. What do you want to talk about today to kick things off? Because, you know, recapping the tour championship, not really on my mind. Yeah. Uh, you know, we do have live golf this week. That's something. But well, go we're ahead. We're going to talk friend. about that. We're going to talk about that. Let's go ahead and start. I want to start about prize picks because I'll let you know right now. Um, I'm old <laughs> and uh, I don't like new things. Um, I'm not like Tim Ander- Anderson level of not liking new things, uh, but I don't like new things. Okay. I don't like. I've been playing DraftKings for forever, and there's probably better better numbers everywhere else. I just like to stick with the new thing, uh, with the thing that I've been going with for a long time. And so I tried prize picks, right? I tried it, and I actually enjoyed it. It was fun. It's really fun. It's a re- super easy way to uh, get your parlay bets in and win a couple of dollars. I had, I had a good time, placed a couple of bets in the NFL this past weekend, uh, won a couple, lost a couple, a lot of fun. Even if you're old like me, it's something you can go check out and go in and play. So make sure you get to check out prize picks. Next, it doesn't get Let's easier, talk. like you said, too. You, you just press the button, and you've got yeah, it. Like yeah, You just yeah, go yeah, through. Yeah. the There's lists and lists of things, and you can kind of pick it apart, too. If you are playing DFS like we are here, especially yeah. when golf gets here, it'll be a lot of fun. If you hear us talking about guys or, or first-round leader bets that you're seeing on Twitter or things like that, you can take that information – and go across and you might be like, Oh, Holy shit. This guy's over under is three, you know, more or less as it is on there for, for three and a half birdies. Uh-huh. I'll take the over on that. And you can click and, you know, just put somebody else in and you've got yourself a little pick them DFS parlay that you can put together. So I, I do really like it quite a bit. That's like I said, it's the easiest way. Yeah. I like it because the there's action. no, there's no pushes. Use. There's no pushes either. Everything's yeah. 0.5. So if you Always go over all the or hook. under, all right, so yeah. over or under, there's no push. So I like it. I like it a lot. Just like it so should be in life, Kenny. There's yeah, winners yeah, yeah. and there's losers. Yeah, That's it, man. None of this yeah. participation bullshit. Somebody wins, <laughs> somebody loses. If you go to a job interview and there's one job and two people go, one person gets the job. There can only be one winner here. What What else, man? Like I said, Liv, Liv is this week. Okay, so uh, let's talk about Liv two weeks ago. Uh, yeah. That was unbelievable. That was one of the best tournaments I've seen all year. Um, now I know people are going to hate me for this, blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah, well, that's why I brought it up. You were putting out yeah. threads and everything. You were, you were really into it. Yeah. I, I, I was enamored. The golf was great. And like, you know, okay, here's the thing I can understand. I can understand if you don't want to watch live because you don't like the Saudi backing. I, I have no argument right. against that. None whatsoever. No argument against your that. choice. If you, if you don't want to watch it because of that, you're a better person than I am basically is what it comes down to because um, you know, I, I 
I can look past stuff like that for stuff that I really like. And that's a horrible trait. You guys are better than me. But I, I'm going to be, I'm going to watch. You know what I'm saying? I love golf. I'm going to watch. And it was a hell of a tournament. Uh, I'm still thinking about this two weeks later. I didn't have a single dollar on that event. And I watched that whole thing because the coverage was great. The golf was exceptional on Sunday. Um, yeah, the leaderboard was sick. It was basically a, a juiced up colonial. Um, like every single person in the top 10 had won a PGA Tour event uh, at some point in time. A couple of majors in there as well. Uh, and then DJ, people saying it was rigged. I almost believed them because that putt on 18, I just couldn't believe that it went in. You know what I'm saying? And it was so good golf. It was, it was so good for Liv. They're going to keep growing. There's no ignoring it now is all I got to say. Hell of a tournament. What did you think about that tournament, DJ winning? It's exactly yeah, what they I'm needed. La- I'm choking over here laughing at you. It's like I'm smoking or something. But uh, I-, I was going to say that, the, you know, the interesting part was the, the funniest joke I saw at least was that DJ just pounded it. He said, I don't get paid for extra holes. It's either over now or it's it's over the other way. Like either I yes. win or I lose. Pumps it at the hole. The thing literally bounced up and fell back in the cup. Incredible ending. I mean, honestly, like you said, all the other stuff aside, I don't like getting into that with it. It's just the point is, you know, the last half hour or so was good. I don't care what anyone says. Like that yeah. was just, just the goal. Golf. Golf. Because they had to bounce around from hole to hole. And the way they started the leaders that day, like two on, one. Off, Genius. on one, like if, if they really, had to say I, that could be a problem definitely could be a problem for it because it, it worked out luck box for him this past week but like you know they're gonna have to figure something out about that i like that because i like being able to watch the whole event in five hours instead right. of 13 that we normally have to watch and you don't even get to see all of the majority of it on the pga tour i really I just, like I just that don't part. get why people care I, obviously again it's another pga traditional type thing where you end on this perfect hole that everyone knows the 18th hole and i get that that again that's different golf it's probably this is not that way it's not for you but i'll say this i was at the playoff win for willie z running all over the damn course to try and find the final hole where he gets in on that thing like it, the hole did not end on 18 in a playoff it ended on a separate hole they got the cameras over there they got the crowds over there it was electric and Willie Z got the W so they can make it work. They, they have cameras everywhere on every hole. People can get to the spots. Like it's still exciting regardless of where DJ dropped it. Even more so with something like live where no one gives a shit about the 18th hole. They don't care where they're at already. So if, it, if it's ending on the 13th or the first, no one on, like, I mean, no one cares and they can adjust and do whatever they have to, like you said, but I don't know. I thought it was solid down the stretch. Uh, speaking of it from this angle, because the DFS podcast, fantasy golf, betting, everything, couple notes. One is, they say it's legit. I talked to my rep today. There is classic DFS, live DFS in the lobby, 50K up top, like a big 555. There's a bunch of good contests for this week. So that's something. Uh, again, I don't know. I was told when I was in Memphis that their software only ran it for four, four day events. So I'm not sure if they're just going to start it on Friday, end it on Monday, but just pay it out after three rounds. Like they just had to do with Euro. Like Euro still showed all the holes left on your six of sixes at the end of last weekend, but they could still pay it out once the tournament was official. So maybe that's, that's how they do it. I don't know, that's but either way doing. I've got confirmation. It's legit. It's classic slate. They'll probably throw in some showdown, but during football 50 K up top, it's still something. So get after it if you want to, but like you said, Kenny, there'll be a lot more of it and we'll see how things shake out in the future. I did see uh, a thing today that there's multiple people apparently from that uh, the players only meeting that said they're yeah. going to be going over that they don't like the Rory tour. P- I PGA heard that Rory. too. Yeah. So I, I don't know what to see. We'll have to see. I mean, you saw Rom was a little bit, I it's sort of tongue in cheek. Uh, about Rom that, goes, asking about I'm going to take interview. that call from day one. Remember I, I put together that little blurb thing, how he kind of had mm. said it the way he was like trying to mm. angle a little bit. We'll see, mm. but I don't Maybe. think he's going to go. I don't think he's going to go, but I don't I, think I don't, so I, I don't think, I don't think he's too happy about the Rory tour. Uh, I think, you know, he thinks that his game is good enough for he should be the man, which that makes sense to me. The guy is articulate on the mic. Uh, he just needs a couple more major wins, uh, you know, to, to, he did, to get he to did that. say that little yeah. thing, like you said too, where he said, you know, yeah. you're asking me, there's two guys yeah, you can me. ask. Yeah, yeah, kind of, I mean, yeah. That was a good little, that was a good little session. Well, yeah. I, I don't know. If we're going to go live, yeah, if we're going to go live, we got to talk about last week, too. The Wentworth, the BMW PGA Championship was a great event. She and I were out there. Oh, yeah. We, uh, it was Rom shooting 62. It was, that was a fun event. Rory up there. Lots of fun. 54 holes. It was a good event. Good golf. Shane Lowry was the, 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 the shot shape that he has on that ball in 18. 
that shot shape he had. Oh man, it was so sick. It was 17 or 18. We had that low trash and he had that, you know, right to left. And I think it was 17 me, and then he just yeah, walked it right up yeah, once he hit it. Yeah, yeah. And they showed that. It yeah. gives, gives me a stiffy every time I see something like that. <laughs> it's just beautiful golf right there. I just way. love just, Shane Lowry too. We get, he comes off, of course, Rory goes looking for him. Right, and, and yeah, he was and, talking shit before the the before the tournament about the live guys. He's like, "Fuck y'all!" And yeah, he and, came out there and won. That was big. I thought that was that's, big. That's why you love to see it. And then yeah. what he says to him, like, I guess he said something else. And then all you could hear is Shane say, "Like, you won enough late lately, anyway." Like type thing. Like back, like Rory's just being himself and joking with him. He's obviously just pretty flush. He just won the FedEx Cup and everything else. But it's just funny to hear those two just go back and forth on it. And then another funny video was like Padraig Harrington giving him a call. Like they captured this on their social media, trying to call him at like, he said, it's like 3 a.m. there. He said, I'm going to be disappointed either way. Cause if he doesn't take my call, it'll be the first time he hasn't taken my call in forever. And if he's not picking up, I'm disappointed that he's not still keeping her going and he's getting yeah. old and he went to bed early. So just funny uh, to see from, some from, of the, from, the from, from Shane Lowry's social media. He was up the next morning drinking a beer. Oh yeah. So. I that's saw my that type too. of dude. That's my type of guy. That's my yeah. type of guy right there. All right. So, Let's uh, move on to um, this week. I forget. It's been two weeks since we've done a podcast. I forget the order of what we do next. I am think I'm going to go uh, over the course. Oh, right, uh, right quick. I know the uh, order. Yeah. It's, it's Listener League, and we don't have one, but I do uh, want to yeah. remind people, join the Listener League. The link will be down below. It's already out on my Twitter, at Totag and Tambo. You can find it there as well. But there, it's 500. They've confirmed with us. We'll do 500 for the swing season, unless we fill it faster. And then they'll move it up to 750 and go from there. But it's still the balanced payout structure, still 500 bucks to first, three max, $5 buy-in. It's there. It'll count towards the Tournament of Champions. So right now there's only one winner from last season. The last one, when we ran Tournament of Champions, we ran it alongside it. Maybe we won't do that next year to make it less confusing. But either way, they're in as the first winner into this season's version. All the prizes and everything for last year were paid out. We're good there. Sorry, Kenny, go ahead. But that, that's back. So, so keep that in mind. All right, so let's get to the course. The PGA Tour is California uh, for the uh, Fortinet Championship of Silverado uh, Country Club, uh, the North Course. This event has been played here since 2014. Uh, so looking at uh, anything prior to that for course histories, no need. Uh, the last six winners uh, have been good or great ball strikers who, who've had issues. I, I guess six of the last eight winners have been good ball strikers who've had issues with the flat stick. I mean, you know, you look at – um. You look at like, uh, hold on, let me look where you got Grio, Steel, Steel, Tway, Champ, you know, all those guys, really good ball strikers. Sorry with the putting. Uh, Strokes gain T to green, all of those guys, actually every single guy uh, who's won in the last like seven or eight years has been inside the top 75, 76 in strokes gain T to green for the year. Uh, that's uh, for that's won this event. So, you know, you can get the guys, and, and the only really, and all, most all the winners have been really poor putters, except for Sink and Homa last season. Uh, so you don't really need to putt that well. Ball striking is going to be important. Uh, length will help, but it's not needed since you see guys like Grio and Sink coming out here and winning as well. So it's sort of a wide open field. Um, you know, the weather could be a factor. Chilly morning temperatures could play havoc on distance control. High winds, usually the norm. Uh, dry conditions, usually the norm. Uh, so this course is in play. It's not a routine birdie fest where you see like 25, 22, 23 under par. Also, you know, Robert John Jones is the original designer of the course, but Johnny Miller came back and redid the course. This is like his home course. Uh, and he wants this course to host majors. So every year he tries to do little things that makes this course more difficult every year. Now, again, if it, if, if it somehow if it rains and it's soft and stuff like that, you know, I haven't looked at the forecast yet. It's too early. Uh, but when I do, you know, if you see rain, if you see soft conditions, then you'll see more of a birdie fest. But 15, 16, 17 under should be the winning score. Now, uh, the North Course is a 7,166-yard uh, 7, par 72 with the standard four par threes, four par fives. It was first designed by Robert Trent Jones and redesigned by Johnny Miller in 2011. The four par fives, four easiest holes on the course. Um, and the majority of the golfers will attempt to reach them in two. Uh, seven of the 10 par fours are between 400 and 450 yards, and only one is over 450. Uh, and that just depends on the tee box being used, too. Uh, so you'll need to see, you'll see, you'll see a lot of wedges and short irons onto these greens. 
Uh, two of the par threes are lengthy, over 200 yards, and two are fairly short between 150, 175 yards. So you're looking at two par threes over 200, plus the four par fives that are reachable. That's six shots over 200 plus. Uh, and then the rest of the time, you're looking at shorter par fours. So you're looking at a lot of wedges from 125 to 150. Now, off the tee golfers, you see tight tree line fairways. The trees are mostly sporadic, not bunched together like a lot of East Coast courses, but these trees are very tall and towering. Uh, the fairways themselves are fairly hilly with some slope, and golfers let the deal with fairway bunkers placed strategically in the landing zones. Now, the rough has two levels, which sort of makes the, the fairway a little bit wider. The first cut of the rough stretches out about 10 feet from the edge of the fairway on each side and shouldn't be a problem for golfers because the length is minuscule. So that's adding anywhere between seven and 10 yards extra width for almost every fairway on the course because that first cut is basically nothing. Uh, the main cut of rough is a blend of Kentucky bluegrass and rye, which can get gnarly, but this is a resort course, so the, so the rough shouldn't get more than two and a half inches in length. Um, now, the, you don't get those, those fires like you do in Bermuda here. It's a little bit easier to hit off of this Kentucky bluegrass, but again, when we get to the greens, these greens can be firm, so hitting it in the rough, you know, it, it's not, if you have a short iron, it'll be easier. Uh, longer irons out of the rough, it's going to have a hard time uh, holding on to the greens. Uh, now, uh, there are quite a few dog legs, and missing on the wrong side of the fairway could make approach shots tricky, especially when you take into account the large trees throughout the course. Uh, golfers that have a low ball fight, you know, they, they, they could have a disadvantage if they hit the ball in the rough uh, off the tee because the greens could play very firm if there is no rain. On approach shots, golfers will see bent grass greens with POA uh, that are average in size. Johnny Miller stated in interviews he wanted the greens to have an Augusta feel. Uh, this shows that the greens are slightly elevated and have a good amount of slope and undulation. One thing we do see with Augusta and one thing we do see here uh, when it comes to the greens, we've seen shitty putters do well uh, on these courses and win the event. So th that, 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 that sort of makes a lot of sense. Uh, many of the holes have tight mown runoff areas and missed approaches that land in these areas will make for a tough up and down on these elevated, elevated, heavily undulating greens. The greens can play firm with a stint meter rating of around 11 and a half. Uh, Poa tends to get bumpy as the day goes on, but Justin Rose did say a few years ago that these are some of the smoothest Poa greens he's ever played on. Now, if you're looking for the courses that are similar to Silverado while doing your research, Riviera, TPC San Antonio, Quail Hollow, TPC Scottsdale, Torrey Pines, and TPC Four Seasons. I don't even think they play there anymore, but you can go back and look at that. Tambo, what are you looking for in golfers this week? Yeah, big thing like you talked about the four par fives, obviously huge. You know, means there's going to be some scoring, even though there's going to be still some tougher spots for them. They're going to score enough that you're going to want to have that. So birdies are better, par five scoring. Those shots, like you mentioned, a lot of shots from 200 plus. So I think that's something to key in on. Usually, don't look at it by exact bucket, but for 200 plus, it's longer irons. It's that simple. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Course history, right, plays a little bit of a factor here. It's been a, a course they've seen plenty of times, and then of course. Going through it, just you know, biggest thing right now. You you joked about it off the top. It's being football season, and we're here on a golf podcast. It's the way it works in swing season, but it's one of the. It's going to be this way every week. It's just lazy weeks, right? People are going to condense. The ownership is going to condense. It's a very large field. There, you know, and what I mean by that, I guess I'll say this two ways, Kenny, because I'll go back for two seconds. Everyone, it's going to spread out some because everyone wants to play their favorite guys. But when you find a guy that you know is going to be popular it's going to be very popular and they're going to actually get even more increased probably than what the projections have them. So once you figure out who the 20% owned guy is, then you're going to see that the projections come out and it ends up being 20% or whatever. I would put them at like 22, 24, because that's actually what they're more likely to come in at. So they're probably more popular than your projection site even thinks when it comes to ownership. So I'm going to key in more on those and look for my leverage spots there. We'll try and think of them as we go through the ranges, but that's really really all I got as far as it comes to for this, for stats and just for general strategy thoughts. Yep. So I know that, you know, this is the first event with all these corn fairy guys. We'll go over a few of them uh, that we've talked about a lot of new names uh, this season. We'll definitely list a few that we like when we go over the tiers, but let's go ahead and start in this. Uh, I guess the 10 K range, you got four guys, Tambo, how are you starting it with these four? Well, who's your favorite? How are you going about it? Yeah, and real quick before I get into this range, you just mentioned a key point there. Also, it's it's on the the I think it's on the Mail Media Network, but it was Sky and oh, Monday yes. Q Info. They yeah. just did a crazy little show. It's about an hour and ten minutes. You can put it on one point five x or even two x if you want and get through it pretty quick. But it's just a breakdown 
of the 50 new guys coming across. Mm-hmm. I didn't get through all of it yet, but I was checking it out at the gym today. The first like 20 guys, they have a lot of good little nuggets and tidbits and ideas and stuff around some of these up and comers. So I think it's some of them we know about already and have seen before, but just something to keep in mind. I would definitely go check that out uh, up here. It's, it's difficult, Kenny. Like I think, Generally, people are going to gravitate. I can tell you who's going to be the lowest on Tigala looks like at 10,000. I know there might be a little bit of love out there in the betting market because some sites had him at 40 to one, but I know that was capped at like a hundred dollar bet for some. And I know that, uh, you know, that's why people bet it based on the number. I've got a guy like that in a minute at a different number that I might not play as much in DFS, but in this range, Homa and Connors, seem to be the ones that pop obviously Homer for good reason. He's the defending champion. What do you think though, that people are going to do with Hideki? Cause I'm trying to think of it of a, how can I get different? And I still think if Decky's going to come in much lower on, he looks really good on the stats, but I know that people sometimes have trouble. He was sixth here last year. He's only so, so lately. And I normally never play. Uh, I, I really normally don't play Hideki over 10 K. So what, what do you think here with Hideki up top? Cause Holman Connors look well, like the well, like he the top 10 at the tour championship. So it looks like he's over his injury. I don't think we have to worry about that anymore, but who knows with Hideki nowadays after the last six months uh, where stuff just sort of pops out out of nowhere after he shoots like a 75. So, uh, you know, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how that goes uh, with, with Mr. Decky, but I like to play. I mean, he's, He's my favorite GPP play up here. I mean, the stats just make it. I mean, talent wise, um, you know, prestige wise, uh, you know, he, him, he towers over everybody. And if he's going to be, you know, the second lowest guy, second um, or the, the third highest owned out of the four in the 10K range, I think I'm going to go after get him. Um, home is going to be my cash game cornerstone the first one i'm yeah. going to start uh, DraftKings has been doing this thing where they've been lowering the prices um for these top guys especially in these events where you don't have a rob or you don't have a rory or you don't have a Scheffler. these events they've been dropping the price down of the highest price guy and i'm still trying to figure it work that out for me what i've been doing now is it's been easier for me with my 60 lineups to go ahead and make uh lineups with like more guys in this range than I normally would because I'm not playing an 11.4 guy. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm starting over 10, seven, 10, six, and it makes it a lot easier to build these lineups. Now I'm not sure if that's the way we should be doing it, but that's just what I've been doing in these type of events. So, I mean, I could see myself playing Hideki Connors and, um, and uh, Homa uh, in GPPs. I'm definitely going to play that in GPPs. Homa is a cash game cornerstone. Um, you know, you play, it's almost like a new Bubba. You play Homa on Homa courses. Uh, yeah. This is a this is a Homa course. Uh, you know, a, you know, in his home state, and, uh, he's coming off with a top five at the Tour Championship. I mean, the guy has game. He's solid. Uh, you know, everything around the board, he looks great. He comes in as a top five ranked player in my model. I got no problem with him. He's my first cash game cornerstone. Let's and, go. And to just this. to note go too ahead. quickly, like you said, the the putting here can be a factor, and he's definitely the best putter. Up here, it worked for him last time. It's what he's comfortable on. You've got all those factors. So even if you want to, like I I talked about the leverage and all that sort of stuff, but if you want to play him, just play him. I just wouldn't pound him in with all the same guys that everyone else is going to be using. And we'll we'll click into that as we're going through those ranges. But I just wouldn't put him in either the same constructions or with the same same guys. Like the, or the same, you know, if you're the same constructions, I mean same build styles. But, you know, definitely just avoid all the chalk in the same lineup here at a tournament like this. And we have plenty of guys that, it's hard to really tell a story, the difference between them. So I got no problem doing that myself. Anything else? You know, yeah, Homa definitely, Homa definitely relies on his putter, but, you know, Benton Poe, best putting, best putting. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying yeah. he's the best. Like if you're, if you're trusting Matsuyama and Connors, that's sometimes tough to do. And the price tag that goes with it versus Homer relies on his putter, but it's been pretty consistent. So, and this is his best stuff. So, you know, that's why he won here last year. It's, it's an easy sell. So I'm with you for sure. Yeah, his uh, iron game hasn't been the best, uh, but he got back a little bit. I mean, if he, if he hits, it, if he, if he, if he can hit the ball average uh, with his putting prowess on bent and being the best putter in this 10K range, he could top 10, uh, even with, just with his putter. Uh, now the variance in that is high because he could have a shitty fucking week and miss the cut because of that. Uh, but I, you know, like I said, you play Homa on Homa courses. His numbers aren't going to look the best uh, out of all these top guys week in and week out. But the guy just has a lot of moxie. And he goes out there and grinds it out and gets these good finishes uh, just out of, I wouldn't even say out of nowhere nowadays. They're becoming more routine uh, for Mr. Homa. So uh, I, I like that play uh, this week for Cats. Let's go to this 9K range. I like the middle. Um, 
I like the middle of this range a lot. So um, I'm trying to remember what my cash game cornerstones were. Okay, it wasn't in this range, but I, Cameron Davis is my favorite player on the board. Um, at $9,600, he's going to be my highest owned golfer. Uh, he's coming off a good end of the year. Uh, you know, he, he had a good beginning of the season, sort of fell off in the middle and came back up uh, at the end with some decent finishes at the end of the season last year. Of course, his iron game strong, tee to green, incredibly strong. Long irons, very, very good. Wedges, well above average. Par fives, top five in this field. The numbers are all there for Mr. Cam Davis. I got the bet form to my favorite play, my highest own. Uh, one of my bets, I like Cam a lot. And then you, I like Riley. You're going to go with Riley and sort of the opposite uh, of Cam and Taylor uh, Penders, who are right above them. Uh, a little bit more short game, a little bit more putting, a little bit more, uh, you know, around the green type play, but still, uh, you know, you have to expect the win is coming for him. Now, what do you, are, are you going to play Pendrith? Uh, even though, you know, could it be 24% owned? Yeah. Could he be the highest owned person in here? Would do you play Taylor Prendith if he's the highest owned golfer in the slate? Yeah, I, I definitely would. I think, again, like I said, the stats, the fact that, you know, if you go look at his recent form, we know that's great. And he actually saw the course here. He came 36 here last year. That was well before that run started with the players, the injury, coming back and getting all those top finishes. So here's the thing, what I'll say about it. It's a better example, actually, than the Max Homa one up top. He's going to be owned, no question. What I want to wait and see here is are more people playing Homa or Connors with Pendrith and then dropping down because they have guys that they can use down below? Or will more start with Pendrith? So a couple of ways I can do it, Kenny, I think this is some good strategy talk, is if more people are able to fit a guy up top, and I'll see that more as the week goes on with where ownership's going, I can start to sort of see what the rosters look like. Then I'll know. If more people are starting with a guy above him, I'll just I could just start my lineups with him. The other thing is, and I know he's not going to get squeezed completely, but our, our guy Mav out in Cali, like he was second here last year. He's, but you've got Homa, Connors, Matsuyama, you know, some do you think there's a, Do you think that's a pricing error? I mean, do you think he just got that price just because he got second here last year? Because he's been playing not great. Yeah. Mav. I mean, it's like, relative to the, the guys that are around him. Guys are around him are playing better, but I'm saying I'm not playing him just because of that last year. He's from, this is, this should be a better spot. For McNeely, I mean, last year that was expected, and he he's came lost. Through. He's lost two point eight strokes or more in four of his last five uh, with his approaches. Yeah, in four of his last five events. Um, you this know, excites me. This is what I love to hear because this is exactly what will have people off of him. Off of him, yeah. Right, and, and to me, that's just not a valid enough reason. And who cares? Like, it wasn't that long ago. It was the end of July when he was coming in eighth and sixteenth. He got you know, 31st at the FedEx St. Jude. Like these are all. So you don't get worried. You don't get worried. He's lost an no. average of 2.2 strokes with his irons in his last five events. No, there's no worry. I mean, isn't that, isn't that a decent enough recent sample size to think that he's struggling or do you think he can come back just out of the blue? No. And also it's like I said, it's relative to what's around him. Like, again, I know that everyone's playing Pendrith, Cam Davis, Davis, Riley going up above it's Connors, Homa, Matsuyama. I think McNeely can go toe to toe with them on a good four days. Like it's McNeely's got to be single digit owned, right? It, well, with the way you're selling me on it is that I thought like people would look at last year and think that, but I mean, I guess when you dig into the stats a little further, that would make sense to me. It's just that he's getting squeezed based on the guys above and the ones below. So what I was going to say is another way I could build my Pendrith lineups is if I find out people are using Homa and Connors and Matsuyama with Pendrith, I could just drop down and use McNeely. If I and you don't even have to do that, you could just start with Pendrith, but I'm saying that might be popular too. So I'll look at it a couple different ways. I like some other guys in here though. I'm with you on Davis, Cameron Davis, that is. I bet Riley, but I'm gonna wait and see here on ownership, like to see what he comes in like, because I think there's actually guys below him. Uh, you know, Steele should be popular. Obviously, you know, two-time winner, everything that's gonna go with it. You're gonna get there. He's 8,900. But what I was gonna say. Uh, Riley, Hoagie, Grillo in that range between Riley and Steele, you've got Hoagie and Grillo where Hoagie looks like it's a bad interesting. price. What's no, that? Hoagie's interesting. He's been playing a lot better. That's, that's what uh, I mean, but most people yeah. don't like to see Hoagie at 9,300. I, yeah. I just don't care because, again, it's the field. You just have, This is what swing season is all about, right? You have to get used to these guys being at prices you don't think are right, but it doesn't matter what you think is right. It matters how they play and how, they, how you build your lineups to get to the top. So uh, I'm not worried about it. I'm, I'm going to play – some squeeze plays in here. And I might just be fine with my bet on Riley. Look, Riley's great. And he is a good putter. So like everything that you would want here, it seems like it, I would expect him to be in the running 
for a win in this swing season here where we've been waiting on the Riley win playoffs, losses, everything he's had at all. So I do think he's good, but when you've got guys like Pendrith Davis, McNeely, Hoagie, Grillo, those guys that you can go to instead, I, I might just leave him out. So we'll wait and see on that, but that's how I feel about this range as of right now. All right, let's go to the AK range. I'll go with my second cash game cornerstone. It's going to be Brendan Steele at um, $8,900. Uh, you know, this is a, this is a course history play. The guy's made what seven of seven straight cuts in a row here with two wins. Um, his game, he's top ten in t- uh, uh, approach and top five in tee to green in this field in the last fifty rounds. Tee to green, a pretty big marker uh, on on picking a winner here. Like I said, like I think every winner uh, in la- at Silverado has been inside the top seventy six in strokes gain tee to green and you take away Stuart sink it's even even lower than that uh the ranking um so you know and and you, you know that's at the end of the year and it's the first event of the season so like how are you gonna know well you don't really know for 100 fact but you have an idea of who you know has been playing well who the good tee to green guys are based on what you've seen in the last few months on tour you can go based on that and, and you know i'm going with steel pretty easy right there um and i like taylor montgomery as my third cash game cornerstone another corn fairy guy this guy's like a dozen top tens on the corn fairy tour i could be over exaggerating but it's pretty fucking close uh you know uh just a top 10 fucking machine out Especially there recently on, yeah oh yeah on the corn fairy tour um probably the best ball striker that is coming out uh onto the corn fair onto the pga tour from the corn fairy uh he's up there with carl Yuan, a couple of other guys who are extremely talented ball strikers but Taylor Montgomery, and he almost made it last year i think he was 26 uh, he just made it, missed it by, I think he was 26 in the regular season. And then I think he was 26 in the playoffs. And you have to finish top 25 in both to, to make it. So well, uh, pretty, 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 pretty unlucky uh, last year. But the guy has mad talent. Uh, I was hoping maybe we could get him at like 7K. But DK ain't playing around. They know what's up. Uh, the guy's a good player. And I like him in cash. Uh, other guys, Troy Merritt, I'm going to play. Another guy who plays his course well. This seems like a merit type course. Uh, all of his numbers well above average. Wedge, wedge game exceptional. Um, so, so I like merit and Dietrich. Uh, Dietrich is going to be. I think he's going to. He has a talent to win on the PGA Tour. Uh, came in fifth at Wentworth uh, this past weekend. Really, really strong game. Um, had a decent season last year as his first one on tour. Not bad. Not the greatest, but you know he kept his card. If, if I'm not mistaken. And, and he, you know, he's coming off last week, uh, no break uh, for this guy, which could be good. Some of these guys had three, four, five, six weeks off, you know, uh, and he's coming in from playing a pretty strong field event uh, on a tough course uh, across the pond. So, you know, he's got a little bit of that, um, you know, mojo going into this event while others might be starting off a little bit cold. Uh, so I like Dietrich a lot uh, for GVP's Tambo. Yeah, the Dietrich thing is interesting. Like you say four top 12s in his last seven that he's played. And I know what that, you know, that's four top 12s. He had missed cuts in, in the middle, but it was a fifth last week. So maybe he found something more. We know what his talent is. Not many know of him. And the interesting thing is I, I think Montgomery and or Justin Suh, who are both in this range, might be the most popular on the slate with your Pendrith point earlier. Because when you look at it, Montgomery, ninth, fourth, third, second, you could still say that the same way as Dietrich four top tens in his last four, but it, you know, it's not seven. I'm just saying that's the whole point. He's right there. hundred bucks more is Dietrich. Interesting. And then you've got Justin Suh who literally just won, but before that ninth, the 37th, you could throw out, but fifth, second, seventh, yeah. miscut 10th. And like, the thing is, if you're not familiar with Justin Suh, I mean, when he was coming out, his graduating class was Hovland and Morikawa and people thought he'd be better in both. And so don't hate on Matthew Wolf. He's on your live tour now that you love so much. So that was the yep. trio that started out strong. Obviously, Wolf has taken a different path. But yes, great point there with him. Uh, I've been waiting for him to come around and, you know, a lot looks good. So but that's the interesting part is like you talked about Montgomery being priced up for what he actually is in this field. It's still fair. And if you put him and Justin Su into a lineup, that's like the average price is what? 8333. Pretty, pretty damn close. Putting those two in, you still have the average to spend on your final four spots. So I think they'll be very popular together this week and for good reason. But like I said, there's ways you're going to have to look around that when you go out to build. So, um, you know, other guys in this range, right at the bottom, a little bit of interest there. So Wyndham Clark, guy that can just bomb it out there. We know that can score well on the power five sometimes is a good putter, Kenny. So I'll have to wait and see. His approach has also been bad. 
but almost like the Mav McNeely thing. I'm just going to take a shot on a course that should be suitable. And then at the same time, I mean, he's got two top 30s here of his last four tries, a couple missed cuts, but still. Uh, but at the same time, Gary Woodland, uh, I think he's pretty interesting at the, the 8K price tag. You think about a guy that can get it out there, find his way around. You know, pretty we say it all the time. It's like a cheat code. Any type of course, there's a narrative there for Gary Woodland. So maybe not a cheat code with the results, but he's definitely capable otherwise. And then you go look at the stats for him. Uh, top 15, T to green. Top 10 on the par four scoring. Seventh in 200 plus like he, he's got some good stats there Kenny so I actually bet him I'll talk about that later got him at 66 but I think he's another good a guy that you could use in this range it could be good so that's where I'm at in here I like your merit call a little bit steel hmm. obviously course history I made cut you get it but we'll see the other guys though I've got more interest in for sure and then just looking to build a little bit differently in this range like I said so and Montgomery will be very popular together go into the 7k range Tamo. Yeah, Chris Kirk, 7,900 right up top. Uh, he was one I was looking at. The The other thing, quick note on this range, because we're going to go 7Ks here. This is basically, uh, you know, tell me it's swing season without telling me. Dean Burmeester withdrew like 20 hours, 24 hours ago. DraftKings put out the pricing like 20 hours after that, and then he ends up in the field still on DraftKings pricing. So you can tell it's football season over there. We'll see if they add Kevin Chappell the guy that got in for Dean Burmeester, but just a heads up there. So uh, some other interesting guys in here, though. I talked about Chris Kirk, Carl Juan there. Yo, I forget how you say his last name, but he's he's 7,800. Uh, Putnam right there with him at the same price, so just 100 bucks less, sorry, 7,700. He's interesting. Taylor Moore, uh, hard to watch with the putter in hand, so that could affect him here, obviously, but I'm still going to take some chances. I've got some interest in him. Nick Hardy, another guy that I bet and we'll talk about later. And then just to round out 7,500 and up, JJ Spawn, another guy I'll always play when there's scoring opportunities out there and potential upside. Uh, ninth here two years ago. And four of his last, three of his last four, I guess, haven't been too bad, including an eighth place in there. So I think he's going to be okay here, Kenny. What do you got in that upper 7K range? Yeah, Spawn, one of my favorite plays in the 7K range. I'm a big fan of his. He came in, he, he had that win early in the, early this year. Played pretty well at the end of the year. Uh, was striking the ball pretty well. Decent finishes out there. Of course, a good par five score. Uh, Iron game strong. Tita Green is good. Uh, makes enough birdies. I like him at that price at 7,500. Uh, my final cash game cornerstone is going to be $100 more than him. It's going to be Ches Reevy at 7,600. Again, this is another cash game corner. This is another um, course history pick. You know, first event of the year. Lots of new people um, going a little safe with the Steel and Reevy picks. Uh, that could be true because I think. Um, you know, I'm going with a little bit more course history there, more what I know. Uh, but I did have to put Montgomery in there, a little bit of risk when it comes to that. But Reeve, he's made like, I think, six or seven cuts here uh, in a row. Uh, Iron game, of course, exceptionally strong. Uh, one, I think, I think he's made six of his six straight cuts in a row since his win. He might have missed one uh, in that in that time. Uh, but since his win at the Bermuda or Barracuda, one of the Bs, uh, he won. And so, Cascade Cornerstones for the week. Max Homa, 10,500. Brendan Steele, 8,900. Taylor Montgomery, 8,500. Ches Reevy, 7,600. This leaves you 14,500 to fill out the rest of your lineups. Other guys I do like in this upper range, call Juan. I don't know, Juan. Uh, he um, was first in the uh, Corn Ferry Tour regular season. Uh, the guy can hit the ball a mile, lots of birdies. Uh, so it's another person to watch out for. Uh, I'm probably definitely going to play him. Um, I play a little bit. Of, uh, see, other, other than that, not the biggest fan of this upper 75, upper 7K, but I do like Nick Hardy uh, at 7,500. J.J. Spawn already said was one of my favorite plays uh, in this range. Lipsky with his iron game, par five scoring, someone else that you could take a peek at. Um, Patrick Rogers, I'm going to go back to uh, again this year. Uh, you know, putting, of course, is it you know, bent poe is his best putting services he had sort of a somewhat of resurgence in his ball striking last season it went down here at the end of the season a little bit but overall a decent ball striking season for him last year better than what it has been hopefully he can grow on that continue putting well uh playing well in california um neesmith of course he's going to be uh, uh not neesmith um svenson is going to be another stat darling of course, with just a ton of birdies, really good from 400 to 450 yards. Uh, Adam Svensson is. Uh, there's a lot of plays down here that I can get behind. 
uh, in this lower 7K range. I mean, you party Marty Laird, Lee Hodges, uh, Austin Eckroat, got her up another couple of guys uh, from the Corn Ferry Tour. Who do you like? Yeah, I'm going to do it like this is what I've been talking about, sort of the end of last season where I was start starting to take more stands down in this range. And then up top, I want to mix it around. But this is completely opposite. I actually want to find, like I said, I'm, I'm going to make some stands up at the top with my pool. And just, you know, if I don't have Thigal, I don't have him. If I don't have Davis Riley, I bet him. Like, there, there's little ways I can just get different up there and just X guys out. And then use the ones that, even if they're chalk, I can still use them accordingly. Because down here is where I want to sprinkle some of the guys you named that I like. So Lipsky, Steven Yeager, those are two guys that I think can make birdies in bunches here. I think they're pretty good. Smalley. Hubbard can do it. I really like Mark Hubbard, but Patrick Rogers, who you just talked about sixth here last year, uh, five of six made cuts here over his last six that he's played. You go to the stats. He's 13th in the par fours, ninth on the par fives. He's actually been a better putter. This is his best surface. I think it's a good spot to get back in on Rogers. Another guy that I bet later when we get to that segment and then Neesmith, you, you mentioned him, but then said someone else, but with Spencer, but I actually like Neesmith. If you go to Neesmith here, he, he ranks out well on approach, top 20, top 15 on Tita Green, first in strokes game, par five. You got to worry a little bit about the other stuff, but typically him, it's fairways, greens, and then can he make the putt? It's going to probably be enough with those par fives and everything that he's got there. I think we're, we can see a pretty good week out of him at 7,200, so I like that. And then Luke List at 7,000 even. Uh, I bet him as well. I just, I don't know how it got there, but I'm going to play some of him and I'm going to play some of Goddard up as well at 7,100. Just get back in on him for the swing season. So anybody else here you want to talk about down at the bottom of the 7K range? Let's go to the 6K range. I mean, you got Will Gordon at 6,900. It was supposed to be a not miss kid. And he, you know, he sort of fell off and uh, lost his tour card last year, but he's back again from the Corn Ferry Tour. He's not my favorite play here. My favorite play is probably going to be MJ Duffy. Uh, at $6,800. He finished, I think, 10th or 11th in the Corn Ferry Tour uh, rankings this past season. Uh, he was the uh, 36 hole leader at the U.S. Open uh, just a couple of years ago. Um, he has a game sort of like Cam Champ, like a Wyndham Clark, um, who where he can just bomb it out there, make a ton of birdies, and try and, try and hit a wedge in and putt. And he makes a ton of birdies, lots of birdies, lots of length. Uh, and we've seen that succeed in certain types of courses. And this, this one, we've seen Cam Champ win. Uh, so it's definitely doable. Uh, you look at the, the Korean, Sung Hyung Kim, at um, 60, where is he? 6,900. 60, 6,900. Now, this course might not be the best for him, but he's another guy. I think he was top 15 in the Corn Ferry Tour uh, coming in. More well-known for his short games, like the shittier Asian Cam Smith. You know what I'm saying? Like short game, putting, really, really solid can be off and on with his ball striking, but if it's if his ball striking is anywhere near average or above average, his short game and his putting will lead him to top finishes. Uh, so this might not be the best course. Uh, you don't necessarily need uh, to have a brilliant short game at Silverado, but for the future, if you see courses where you're going to need a good short game, a good putter, you know, Sung Hyung, uh, he might be the next Korean guy that you want to get with. Um, other guys down here, Robbie Shelton's a guy who lost his car last year. Was a lot of talent. Another Corn Ferry Tour guy. Um, who do you like down in this range? I'm just looking because this is the other thing too, right? You've got a bit of a city, like 6,900. You talked about Will Gordon, who when you go look, so 26, 46, he got his W after coming fifth and fifth. So, I mean, the guy is on an incredible run himself. But then you've got a guy like C.T. Penn right there, like, a legit PGA talent that's got sixth here last year. You know, stats actually look pretty solid down here. And all, obviously all these guys are on their way. Some have already played on the PGA tour, all that. I'm just saying CG Pan looks pretty good at 6,900. And then on top of that, you got old Michael Kim. Kenny, yeah, he's been playing well. Guy. He he's has been, been playing really well. incredible, man. So it's like 17. After missing like 727 cuts in a row on the PGA tour. Of course, he got regulated, relegated to yeah. the Corn Ferry tour. And now he's balling. But rattle them up, like to rattle them off right quick, like a 17th, 26th, 5th, 5th, 13th, 3rd, 7th. Like the guy's really just getting into it. And he was doing that with some of the stress that was going with the fact that he was actually having to turn down. They've changed the rule now, thankfully, but he was having to turn down uh, invites or tournaments on the PGA Tour to save energy. Not even the weeks yeah. that there was a Corn Ferry Tour event where he was doing that too, where he had to play it instead to keep his points to get enough to get back to his chance here for his opportunity, I should say. But for weeks that there wasn't even a corn for your event, he's like, I have to save the energy to be able to play next week to get my card back. So it's like, he's really been playing well and motivated. So 6,900 alone is packed up pretty good there. Bramlett 
is the guy I always like, Robbie Shelton, I believe just won a couple weeks ago. I can't remember if he did or not. I'm pretty sure I saw that along the way in my travels. And yeah, it was like uh, two weeks, three weeks ago. Yeah, he's another Corn Ferry Tour guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so great. he had 26, I mean, yeah. 28th, first. And then before that, had a second, a 21st, and a 23rd. So Shelton is good. I like him. I uh, like his game. I think he's good down here. Uh, Doug Gim, another one that like, so Doug Gim, Adam Shank, Kazire, some of these guys down here, like you, you could just see them pop up for a week in a field like this for sure. Yeah. So, you know, I, I have interest in those guys. Kazire is interesting at that, that price. Kazire. Yeah. Uh, I definitely you know think. Because you know, he's got the talent, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's what I mean. It's not yeah. like, you know, we were, we were playing him at some of the, events down the stretch i remember just recently on the the pga tour for the fantasy golf world championship when i was in it there we we're playing him in that to get through to the live final and he had a couple good rounds so i think there's like you know more there's merit to that so you can go to him um you know i bet benny out benny on so we'll talk yeah. about that later i mean I the, okay here's the thing about this event i mean it doesn't look like it's the best field but there are plays down here benny on he just said 6500 paul haley <laughs> 6600 another guy who finished top 10 uh, on the corn Ferry tour. This guy's more of a, of a uh, grinder, a short knocker off the tee, uh, accurate as hell. Emiliano Grino, Grio. He's won this event. He has that, he has that type of game. Um, I think and his putting is not that great, but probably better than Emiliano's. Um, <laughs> so that's another guy that you can look at at 6,600 or 6,500. Smotherman is off the charts when it comes to stats. Um, for me, uh, I might throw a little bone at him. Benny on, of course, down here as well. Ben Griffin, another guy, top 15 on the corn Ferry tour. Another guy to keep your, keep your eye on when it comes to these new guys coming in. So there are plays down here. Anyone else down below? No, I think that was probably it. I was looking at, uh, Oh, uh, Chad Ramey was the only other guy that I looked at down here that I think he's 6,200. And nothing really special about him for what he's been playing like, but just another talent level for what I've got down here. He's one that stood out. So he, he's just the only other guy I could take a flyer on. But like I said, not, not really worried about trying to find that diamond in the rough as much as I'm going to focus on who's everyone else playing, what's the ownership look like, and then how can I build accordingly against that? So I'm mostly focused on that, but I like a lot of the guys that we talked about there and then just going to pick my stands up top. That's how it's going to shake out. All right, let's go to bets. Um, I got, nine this week okay that's a lot but you know for this event i think the majority of the winners have been 50 to one or higher uh so i have five bets 100 to one or more and then four bets under so let's go ahead and go over them uh for me uh this week first off i'm gonna go um cameron davis 22 to one taylor pender 30 to one Davis Riley, 35 to one. Um, Taylor Montgomery, 50 to one. Those are my four uh, lower odds. And then the rest are all bombs. It's going to be Patrick Rogers, 100 to one. Carl, Carl Juan, 100 to one. Um, MJ Duffy, 180 to one. I threw Hanger Harris English in there. Harris English is in this field. And, and I think, I, I forget how cheap he is. I think he's in the 6K range. Uh, you know, I know since the injury, his game has not been there, but this, you know, it was a year ago where, you know, he was one of the top players in the world with like three wins in the season, uh, two or three wins in the season. And it hasn't been that long. Maybe since he's had a little bit of a break, you know, he's, he's, he's healed he's, and he's ready to go out there and play golf. Well, again, we'll see. I mean, it's just a flyer uh, out there, 150 to one. Uh, also, I might use him, you know, in a couple of DFS lineups just to see, uh, you know, if he, because you know, the upside's there. The man has won three tournaments in the last couple of years, you know? Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and take that risk and maybe he's gotten a little bit better. And lastly, I got uh, Benny on at 250 to one. Yeah. You got a better number than me there. I'll go backwards. I've got seven here. So Benny on, I got at 200. Luke List, I got at 150. He's down to 100 in some place, 125. So I'll take that. Patrick Rogers, I love this one, 110. I like that quite a bit. Nick Hardy, who I talked about earlier, is another guy that I like, 80 to one. Woodland at 66. Again, I'm I'm all above 50 here. Montgomery, who you talked about, the same at 50. And the only one I took down below, like Riley, 35 to one. Davis Riley, like I said, if he's picking up ownership and whatnot. I don't have to play him. I just, I, I, I think this time of year and that number, 
it's I think when he'll get his win is one of these types of events. Why not this one? So I'll bet him at 35 to one, like I said, I'll, I'll still mix him into the pool. He's not someone I might completely X, but uh, he's definitely my decision up there right now. When you've got so many other guys in that range for the week. So that's where I'm at with my bets for this week, Kenny. And then we're going to save one and done for the regular season. So we'll, we'll do one and done when the regular season comes back. All right. That sounds good. All right. You can find me on Twitter at Kendo VT. You can find my article on gupscorner.com. It'll probably be out either later tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, with my course preview stats to look for trends strategy all that good stuff and then wednesday afternoon i'll release uh my uh casket cornerstones if there's any changes final betting card if there's any changes and my favorite gpp plays after a couple more days of research in each price range uh so you go to gupscorner.com use promo code kenny save yourself 30 percent yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Totag and Tambo. Another thing about that, just some people ask, like swing season, we've got this show, uh, Run Pure Sports. I'll talk about it more in a second, but runpuresports.com. We're going to have a free show every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. So it'll be another 24 hours-ish after this, like at least a little bit more research that I can get in to be able to get more in-depth and pull up ownership projections, have a lot more that we're putting into that. So myself and Hoop are going to be on that show called The Strokes Gain. You can just follow our YouTube channel on, on YouTube, Rump Your Sports. Uh, subscribe there as well. And then rumpiersports.com. If you guys want to get in, I have to tell you about this promo right quick. Promo code NFL15. It ends tonight, tomorrow. It'll, be, it'll go still for a little bit, but it's 15% off for life. Prices will go up after that. The code will go away. But if you don't get in on that code, we do have a promo code here as well. DGEN50, D-E-G-E-N-5-0. You guys can get 50% off your first month. Check it out. See what you think. Get in the Discord, all those things. But every sport, one price, over seven sports on the site. So you're able to get on, on all the action. And then lastly, on my Twitter, the tidbits thread for golf will come back for the regular season. So there will be some when it crosses over with football. But I'm doing, I'm in football mode right now, right? There's a lot of money up top every week. I'm playing golf. I'm getting you guys all the information. I'm still researching plenty, getting into all this stuff. But football mode heavy so a lot of free shows i'm gonna post my whole content schedule this week on my twitter so follow me there at toe tag and tambo a lot of free shows some here on this very network and then like i said the, the tidbits will come back in the regular season every week for golf that's all for me kenny for this week buddy all right so we're starting off season eight strong let's win some motherfucking money dj nation i've been getting dirty money jordan Belfer.